Hi, good afternoon. This is Mark Giles, and today this is part of our first time home buyer series. And I'm going to be helping you understand the things you need to do when you want to buy a house. I've been helping homeowners buy houses, well, home, prospective home buyers buy houses for over 20 years, getting them pre approved. And every day I'm answering questions to people about how to buy a house. And so today we're going to talk about uh, this is a part of our first time home buyer series. And today we're going to be talking about what to do when you're getting pre approved to buy a house. Okay, so some of the things that you want to think about are what is a pre-approval? What is a pre-approval versus a pre-qualification? These are good questions. I get these kind of questions every day. Things you need, um, uh, what, what the, the five things you need to know when you're getting pre-approved. So for example, when you're getting, when you're wanting to buy a house, some of the questions you want to have answered are how much house can I afford? You want to know how much um, you qualify to purchase. You want to know what your payments are going to be for your new house. So when you're buying your house, you're going to be making monthly payments and that's what's going to determine the affordability. And so as you're getting the answers to these questions, you're getting confident about what you can and cannot do. And then we also give you a certificate, which is called a pre-approval. So I'm going to walk you through a lot of these questions and uh, get you some answers to these questions. And we're going to make sure that you know what you need to do when you want to buy a house. Okay. But real quick, let me give you a quick disclaimer. Uh, first of all, this is all brought to you by the Center for uh, Home Ownership. And it's a virtual workshop that we're going to be presenting to you. And this is the first in a series of the first time home buyer workshops. So these video presentations are for educational and entertainment purposes only. This is not legal or financial advice. All right. If you want that, go to your accountant or financial planner. I have a lot of knowledge, but um, any results demonstrated in these videos are not guaranteed. You must apply and get qualified. And this is not an offer to lend or a commitment to lend you any money. And this is also brought to you by a non-for-profit. This is for educational purposes only. Okay, like I said, we're going to talk about what to do when you're getting pre-approved. And this is brought to you by the Center for Home Ownership and Community Enterprise, which is a non-for-profit. And our mission is to help you live an independent, dignified lifestyle. We help realtors, we help business owners, and we also educate um, first-time home buyers as well as investors in real estate, as well as business. Okay, and me personally, I'm Mark Giles. I'll be working with you uh, during these these uh, workshops. We'll be getting some guests to come along and uh, share some information with us as well. Uh, my commitment personally is to educate home buyers, investors, business owners, and this is very important to my life. As you will see, as we proceed down the path to you getting your home. I've helped hundreds of people buy homes, originally from the Bronx, uh, live in Westchester, and um, I'm a licensed real estate agent as well as a mortgage loan originator in three different states. That would be New York, Connecticut, and New Jersey. My NMLS ID number is 97969. So my passion, once again, is to educate home buyers. So let's dive in and get started. All right, before we start, if you have any questions, just click on the chat button or text me, email me if you're watching the repeat of the video. We're going to dive in. Question number one, what is a pre-approval? Pre-approval is when you are interested in buying a house, just like as if you were buying a car, you want to know what your payments are going to be, right? So the pre-approval is what is going to let you know the answers to certain questions. What are your payments going to be? How much cash will you need to part with in order to purchase your home? We'll answer questions like... Um, what loan programs you qualify for. And a lot of times you get a good education about the different loan programs. A big challenge with it is a lot of times we go get go for information to lenders, banks, and oftentimes those people behind the desk are commissioned salespeople. So they have, they have a, a, a deadline, a quota to meet. They got to feed their family. They're not on salary. So a lot of times they don't have the time to spend with you to educate you about uh, the home buying process in general. If you're lucky, they'll be able to give you some quick answers for specific things about you by taking an application. But if you're looking to get educated and learn more about how to manage your finances and assets and do what to do in terms of your credit to prepare your credit so that you can get your house, you really need to come to a platform like this so we can spend the quality time educating you and you can get the answers you need. Working with a commission salespeople, we respect their time they are very important and their time is very valuable. And unfortunately, they cannot spend the time with you. So pre-approval is what you're going to need <clears throat> so that you can understand your own specific situation. 
right, in terms of your buying power. If you do the complete pre-approval, your credit will be run. We answer any questions about your credit. A lot of times if your scores are low, we'll tell you exactly what you need to do in order to get your scores higher. Sometimes you need to, uh, you know, pay off certain bills, pay down certain debts. There's things that you can do to re increase your credit score. If you have uh, working with somebody who's very knowledgeable and has time, we can walk you through all of those steps. That's what I do every day. I talk to customers every day about these items. So credit, there's four things you need when you're buying a house. Your credit, checking that. Your income, we want to verify your income, how many years you worked at your job, all of that good stuff. Your assets, how much cash do you have? How much cash do you want to part with? Just because you have a million dollars doesn't mean you want to spend the whole thing on one house, right? Uh, so that's income, credit, assets, and uh, and that's it, really. The next thing you'd need to look at is the house. So the pre-approval is for people who haven't quite found a house to buy yet. And so they want to know, what can I qualify for? What kind of house should I be looking for? So that way, when you're out shopping for your house, you'll need to know, can I buy the house that I'm shopping for? So what happens is if we submit your loan to the underwriter, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, those underwriters are, it's a digital submission. So we package up everything, we submit it, and uh, we get you a, an approval letter because you've been approved by the lender. So Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac are not the actual lenders. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac are two agencies, the quasi-governmental agencies that are created by the government, supported by the government in order to buy all the loans, primarily most of the loans that are made in the United States to buy single family and multifamily homes, one through four family properties. And so the guidelines when you're going to buy a house, no matter what lender you go to, nine out of 10, I'd say 99 times out of 100 times, the guidelines are going to be set by Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. And then there's a third agency called FHA. FHA is not a actual lender. FHA is a uh, it is a mortgage insurance company. So what FHA does is FHA will uh, insure. They will provide insurance, not to you, but to the lender who's going to lend you the loan so that you can buy a house with a lower down payment. So, for example, if you're buying a $400,000 house and you're going to put 20% down, Two times four is eight. That'd be $80,000 that you're going to need as a down payment. FHA will go to the lender and say, hey, listen, I know Mrs. Jones is a first time home buyer or, you know, whoever you are is a first time home buyer. And we would like to allow this buyer to buy the house with as little as three and a half percent down. So that same $400,000 house would enable you'd be able to buy that house with as little as uh, $14,000. Right, because FHA is going to tell the lender if you don't pay, they're going to go and settle up with the lender and then they'll foreclose and take the house from you. All right, so FHA is providing an insurance policy <clears throat> for the lender that you will pay. Right, it's a mortgage insurance premium that you'll pay every month, and also you have to pay upfront is an upfront premium and a monthly premium. <clears throat> so that's very important when you're buying a house, uh, whether you're getting a pre approval or a pre-qualification. The difference is, is that the pre-approval has already been submitted to the lender and they signed off on it <clears throat> to give you the mortgage. And that is critical when you're buying a house so that when you're out in the street shopping for your house, you know <clears throat> that with your certificate, if you buy it within your range, you should be able to get that mortgage to buy that house because you've been pre-approved. Okay, next topic, question number three we have here. Is uh, what are the five things that the pre-approval will let you know? So one of the five things that the pre-approval that will let you know, as we discussed, will analyze your credit. <clears throat> we'll let you know if there are things you need to do with your credit report that will improve your score. Or if your score is good, tell you the things to do that keep your score good. Credit. Second thing is your income. We'll let you know if your income is sufficient. And so the direct correlation with your income is your monthly payment. What is the maximum monthly payment that I can make on my new home? And uh, sometimes we don't want to make the maximum monthly payment, but if we're approved for the maximum monthly payment, we know we can buy a house and pay less. And so, which takes us to the next topic. <clears throat> What's the most expensive house that I could buy? 
Obviously, we don't want to buy the most expensive house. However, we want to know our buying capability. This is a very safe place in order to make decisions and think through things. So if you're working with a, a lender who is listening to you and working with you, then <clears throat> you should feel safe and comfortable that you are getting the knowledge that you need in order to proceed. And that's why we're here today to give you the knowledge and information you need. So you'll know how much the maximum you can purchase for your new home will be. Uh, another thing that the uh, income asset credit. So those are some of the things. Then the next thing will be uh, another great question that will be answered is how much cash do I need to part with to buy this house? How little do I have to spend? And what is the maximum that I have to spend? What are the closing costs that are associated with the purchase of the house? We want to know the answer to that question. I know we're going past five things that the pre-approval will let you know, but it's a lot of information and these are great great questions that you'll have that you will need to have answered. And I always tell people what's more important than what I know, because I know a lot of ton of information about the mortgage business is more about you, what we can help you understand about your situation and how you can get what you want and what you need to do to get what you want. <clears throat> Another question that we can answer is for self-employed borrowers. We take a look at your tax returns, evaluate your tax returns, tell you uh, a lot of people come to us not understanding how their tax returns were prepared. A lot of people will tell us, hey, Mark, you know, I, I understand that um, what my tax return says, but I didn't put that. My accountant put it. You know, a lot of people say things like that. So we help you get a real understanding about what's on your tax return, what was reported, how that impacts your ability to buy the house. So if you're self-employed, there's a lot of nuances that you need to really understand and beginning to begin to get a handle on to, in order to manage your finances to get the kind of house that you want. And like I said, these are the questions we answer every day. So next question, uh, next topic we want to talk about is the five things that the pre-approval will let you know. I just want to recap that before we go to next. How much money, how much home you can buy, the monthly payments for your new home, right? Covered that. Discover special loan programs. That's another one. That's a very important one. You want to know about are there any particular loan programs that might help you if you're self-employed, if you're a first-time home buyer, if you are uh, you know, buying a house in a certain area. There are certain programs that would actually enable you to buy a house with no money down. If you're a veteran, for example, uh, how will uh, what loan programs can I work with? How does the program work? How will it help me? Maybe your husband was a veteran. You know, these are questions that you need answered. And these are the things that the pre-approval will answer for you. Is buying better than renting for you? <clears throat> yes, I've had clients come through. We've answered questions for them and come to the conclusion that at this time, renting might be a better proposition for them. So they're going to hold off. So that's another thing is the pre-approval process will answer for you whether you need to be buying a house right now, maybe six months from now, a year from now, or maybe two years. Maybe we're just in the pre getting in the process of getting um, things together, which is fine. Right. There's nothing wrong with that. In fact, that's the time. Some people shy away when they're in that stage. And I'm telling you right now, this is not the time to shy away when you are thinking about it. And, you know, hey, might do it a year, a year and a half. From now. This is the time you really want to start looking at these items. Right. Check your credit. And that's another thing. Some people ran their credit four years ago and they're walking around with a stigma. Oh, my credit is bad. Hey, times change and your credit score changes every day. And there are things that you can do to um, get your score higher. So don't panic. All right. Uh, so those are the five things that the pre-approval will let you know. Let's move to the next topic. Bonus question. What are the documents you need? Okay. So the documents that you're going to need to get your uh, pre-approval done, right? If you want to do, do it the right way, what you want to avoid is you want to avoid going somewhere and just having a quick conversation with somebody and them just telling you, oh yeah, you qualify for this. And they might even give you a little certificate. But that is not good. You want somebody to analyze your documents. Document analysis is very important in this business because we don't approve borrowers. We approve their documentation. And so documentation um, for you when you're getting pre-approved should be analyzed, reviewed before they issue, before you are issued a pre-approval letter. That way you are certain that somebody has of, of, of uh, somebody knowledgeable has um, read it like an underwriter and 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 
and determine based on the documentation that you are qualified. A conversation is good and it's fine. However, you definitely want to have somebody take a look at your documents. Uh, a qualified professional, loan officer, and underwriter. Okay, well, the loan officer will look at it. The underwriter will um, sign off on it. <clears throat> okay, these are the categories of the documents that you're going to need in order to get your pre-approval done. All right, so these are income, assets, credit, and, of course, your identification. The lender needs to know that you are who you say you are. So that's the identification. Uh, the income, basically, if you're employed, you're going to need a copy of your your um, pay stubs, your tax returns. Your If you are self-employed, we're going to need your business tax returns as well as your regular tax returns. And then um, that's for your income. If you are retired, we take retirement income. How about that? We'll take Social Security. We'll take your um, pension, pension income. We use that. Sometimes, depending on, you know, what other income you might have. Some people have actually used forced to care income and there's different kinds of income that you can use. So when you're exploring, you want to take a look at all the different kinds of income that you might have that you can look at to qualify to buy the house that you want to buy, because that's what this is all about. The assets. Assets are, are basically cash. How much cash do you have? How much money do you have to put towards buying your house? The assets would be your bank statements, usually for two months, your um okay some people have different assets in different in different places a cd a certificate of deposit you might have a um a 401k you've been saving money in your 401k for a number of years those are assets you can use that money towards the purchase of your house you have to talk to and we'll tell you how you work that out that can be a little complicated but it's not difficult very simple all right um what else can you use um you talked about bank statements 401k, you have uh, all kinds of annuity plans, all kinds of different things. Some people have life insurance that has a cash value to it. You can use that. So these are all assets. And additionally, you know what? You can get a gift. You can get a gift to buy a house. So these are the things that you want to sort out in the beginning. So if you're going to get a gift from Aunt Susie or whoever, this is the time to start talking about it to Aunt Susie and saying, hey, can we do this and prepare? The pre-approval is important because you do not want to do all of this stuff after you found the house, after you signed a contract. That's a challenging moment because now you are stressed. The purpose of getting pre-approved is to reduce the stress. The purpose of taking these courses and educating yourself is to reduce the stress, bring it down. You want to breathe deeply and you want to feel good about this process. It's a very safe place if you do it right. <clears throat> if you don't do it right, it can be very stressful. And so I encourage people to uh, really participate and um, get pre-approved up front now. All right. So um, let your dreams begin today. Do not hesitate. And we talked about, we're going to talk about the mindset of a home buyer and what you need to do and how do you need to think in order to overcome the barriers that a lot of people impose upon themselves. All right. Want to get your mind right, clear your thinking and uh, go into a daily routine where you can start saving, getting your credit right, get, uh, doing the things that are going to lead to you building assets, getting your generational wealth, building your financial portfolio. It sounds complicated, but it was really not. I've been helping people do this for 20 years, and that's why we're here. It's all about education. So at this point, I want to invite you, if you haven't already, become a member with our, um, with our financial education. <clears throat> Right. One of these steps we're taking here is how to get a house, obviously. And um, we also have courses for business owners to help you educate you in terms of how you can um, do the things with the corporations. Uh, we have trusts, um, build up your portfolio so that you can uh, not only save money, you can avoid paying high taxes. You can do the things that, you know, you hear corporations do. We have a lot of education on that so you can achieve your financial goals. All right, whether it's buying a house, starting a business, or, you know, getting your portfolio together. So finally, I would like to uh, just let you know that there's nothing to uh, hold you back. And there's no cost to sit down and discuss with a real estate professional, qualified lender um, like myself or anybody in the uh, mortgage or finance business. We get your money to finance your business or your home. All right. So um, if you have any questions, I always want you to hit me up. 
and ask me any questions that you have. And uh, we're going to be showing you case studies. I'm not going to do it here today, but we have case studies about homes, about how people have purchased homes, and sh just give you ideas of how it works. Because when you see how it works, we're going to um, you can start to picture yourself doing it as well. So I'll be sharing with you the case studies and some upcoming videos. And uh, make sure you sign up for our membership. Make sure you like the video. Make sure you uh, subscribe. And we'd love to see you in the next videos. And um, I'll talk to you soon. Once again, it's Mark Giles. And let's just recap real quick. All right. What we talked about today is we talked about the five things your pre-approval will let you know. How much home you can buy. The monthly payments for your new home. Discover special loan programs. Find out about how much cash you'll need to buy your home. And then we talked about the different types of the documentation that you need. Right. So these are the items that you want to start gathering together. I'm going to give you a handout in below with the list of items that you would need to gather, uh, whether you're self-employed or you own a business uh, or you are working a regular job. So if you look below, you can download the document as a list for you. And so I really appreciate you joining us today and I look forward to working with you in the future. Once again, this is Mark Giles for the Center for uh, home ownership and community enterprise. And our goal is to get you to be independent, dignified, to live an independent, dignified lifestyle, the one that you dream of, uh, financially set. And I'll talk to you soon. Thank you.